Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sakura at the Summer Heike, and we're back for another episode of Sims 4 Hidden Child Challenge. So, in the last part, I don't even know what happened yesterday. It was such a major cluster. I don't even know anymore there, guys. Like, I really just don't know. Anyways, though, um, can we just take a second here? Take a second here and uh, look at this. Marcus Flex is back from the dead ish. Well, he's still dead AF. But he's back, booty and all. He basically asked Victoria out on a day date. And uh, I cry on the inside because he literally just come back. He literally just came back to his killer. And it just, oh my goodness. Like, honestly. Victoria is still a little bit stressed about this right now, and it's honestly I would be stressed too. Oh god, this pool is nasty AF still. <laughs> this pool is like really questionable. <laughs> so yeah, apparently we're going out for dinner with a ghost. It's just, yeah. No, it's creepy there guys. It's creepy, it's creepy. So, now he's, oh god, he's still in love with us there, guys. He's still in love with us. Oh, god, help. Victoria's just kind of like, okay, let's not take a look at him. Let's not, let's, so, can, wait. I don't even know anymore, guys. Like, I just, I don't even know anymore. Yeah, no, there, guys, honestly. This is petrifying right now. Because Victoria is looking at, at her freaking... Oh, yes. Is looking at her menu right now and she's just kind of like, Okay, so apparently I'm on a ghost. Apparently I'm on a date. Oh man, I literally killed. Like, actually killed. And, well, not really. She kind of indirectly killed him by a cow plant. And witnessed and basically watched him die. But, oh, yeah, no there guys, I am literally, yeah, Victoria is literally petrified by this. So we're going to go ahead here though, and we're going to order for table. And just literally, like honestly, Victoria feels so awkward and just so out of place by this because she was totally thrown off by this and you know <laughs> technically this is Marcus's money that we're using so we're gonna go ahead here though I'm actually just gonna go ahead get a wine get a thing of wine because that's what Victoria needs right now because she doesn't know exactly how this date is going to play out you know she doesn't know if Marcus is going to try to call her out on killing him or making a scene or whatever else so she's just going to go ahead here she's going to order Stuff that she really needs to help herself calm down. So she's going to go ahead here, have um, a shepherd's pie, and he's going to have something that he literally enjoys, which is a Canadian bacon pizza. So, <laughs> yeah. I really kind of think, though, that he's really trying to figure this out, though, and I don't know, guys, like, what do you think Marcus might be up to in his afterlife? Do you think that he might be planning a murder? Or... Or anything kind of, like, skeptical on that? Because honestly, I feel so uncomfortable. I feel rather attacked, actually. <laughs> and yeah, I know, guys, honestly, this is just petrifying. This is just, like, a petrifying time for Victoria because she's just kind of like, okay, what are you here for? You know, it's like, what do you want from me? And Marcus is over here just kind of saying, you know, I want answers. Like, why did you do what you did? And But I really just, you know, it's just, honestly, we need you out of the picture. And, I mean, like, don't worry, though. I mean, it was your daughter's idea anyways. So, that just where it just drops the bomb on him. It's like, yeah, no, it's your daughter's idea. It was your daughter's idea. It was your daughter's plan to kill to kill you. And, oh my goodness, no, not right now. 
Not right now. We're kind of in the middle of like a meal. But that is exactly what Victoria is trying to tell him. And you know, and of course, sadly, Marcus is buying it. And he's like, well, okay. Then why don't you turn her in? She's like, well, I'm planning to. But, you know, I also kind of want my daughter to have a normal child, you know. But I also as well don't want her to go and enjoy her prom before, you know, she suffers a horrible and painful death. You know. So it's honestly such a horrible thing that she's doing, but she really thinks that this is what's best. She's gonna go ahead though and drink, like really bad, because she really needs a good drink or two. So, <laughs> oh my god, she just, that was the only thing that she cared about was getting that drink, and she is just going to devour it. Like... Oh, you're hot. Ale oh, you're Alexander Goff? Well, he definitely hasn't changed over the years, that's for sure. He definitely hasn't changed much. But he's definitely, I don't know, he's definitely kind of seeming more like a rebel. If you guys know what I mean? He seemed more rebelish. But that is essentially what Victoria is trying to do, is that she's basically just trying to put all the blame on her daughter right now, because she really doesn't want to face the time for her crimes. And so she's going to nail it all on Destiny, and let Destiny face the consequences of Victoria's actions. Which, I mean, it's such a horrible thing for Victoria to do, but, you know, she's like... But... It, in her little mind, she thinks that in this world, you need to fight for yourself. You know, it's either, you know, it's either eat or get eaten for her. So that's, ex so, so that is basically Victoria's philosophy, and therefore she's really just trying to kind of play with Marcus over here and kind of drag him along and tell him, you know, it's like, it wasn't my idea to bring you down. It was all Destiny's idea. I just took care of the cow plant part. You know, I was just, you know, she took advantage of my cow plant. She fed it to you. And she literally tricked you into being, to being a victim. I mean, like, you're dead. You watch over us. Do you not? You know, I was so heartbroken over your death. But Destiny just kept on smiling. I don't understand. So, I mean, like, literally, she is literally playing this victim card as hard as she possibly can right now because she really really wants Marcus to really think that she was you know that she still cares for him and that she still loves him even though this isn't the case that was the whole reason why she dumped Marcus in the first place was because she really didn't really because she really felt like she was being pressured by Marcus. She really felt like that she was being, you know, she really felt like she was being entrapped by Marcus. And therefore, she thought that it would be better off if we just, just said goodbye to him and just literally wiped him off. Okay, she really needs to finish in Shepherd's Pie, so that way maybe she might go ahead and woohoo with him a little bit. Because she is feeling pretty flirty right now. Oh, nope, never mind. Okay, well, come on. You really need to finish your food. You can keep flirting with Marcus and playing handsy and playing, like, handsy with him. But, I mean... Yeah. Yeah, like, literally. She is literally just kind of playing along here and really wanting to tell him, you know, it's... You know, really just, you know, it was all Destiny's plan. It was, you know, none of it, none of this was my idea. And I'm sorry this happened to you there, Marcus. You know, I, I didn't mean for it to happen. Which, I mean, it's definitely really working on Victoria's part here. Okay. 
We're going to go ahead and we're going to end the meal and pay $37 for it. But she's going to go upstairs though and they're going to go ahead and enjoy some woohoo. Go enjoy some fun a little bit. So let's go upstairs or eat there, you little lovebirds, and go have fun. Or not. We should be able to, still, to go upstairs and still have some fun. Can we not? Where's Marcus going? What? Marcus, no, you can't let like, go away. Not yet. I kind of want a woohoo. Woohoo. Come on. Come on, Marcus. Just a good old time. Just a good day. There we go. Now he's digging it. He's like, yeah, totally. Let's do it. Which essentially means that Victoria's little scheme has worked on Marcus. Now she has to convince another woman that that it was all that this was all Destiny's doing. This was all Destiny. This was all part of Destiny's plan. So, which I don't know how hard it's going to be to to convince her. I don't know how hard it's going to be. To say, you know what? I feel victimized. Which, you know, it's something that Victoria would totally do, by the way. But I'm just going to go ahead here, though, and just do a quick little woohoo and having some fun. Right there, guys? Yep. So kind of an essence of happiness from the cow plant from earlier. Oh my goodness, this is, ugh. Victoria, what the hell are you doing with your life? I don't even know there, guys. But, yeah, no, she literally has now lured Marcus into legitimately thinking that it was all Destiny's idea. And that, and that this was, you know, and that Destiny was the one who lured him, and Destiny was the one who basically tricked him into eating the cake. So, and that Victoria was just a poor victim of the circumstances. So, it's, yeah, honestly, the guy, it's just, what she's trying to do to him is horrible. I mean, just a horrible thing for any person to do. But, of course, though, now they're going to go ahead and go to sleep, though, because they're just tired. <laughs> like, honestly, it's just, it's been such a train wreck of a night. For them, and I don't even know exactly what Victoria wants to do for herself anymore. Like this is this is a bad thing that's going on like right now. I don't I don't like guys. I don't even understand why she keeps doing this to herself. Like she keeps going back, and I just I don't understand why she does this to herself, and I don't understand why she really just decides that she chooses to do this to herself almost consistently and I mean Victoria is just a little tornado but I'm kind of wondering how, what she's gonna do when she pins the blame of Marcus's death on destiny she's blaming you know like like that's what she wants to do she wants to blame destiny she wants to blame you know she wants to say that destiny did this to him that destiny was, you know, Destiny was the mastermind behind all of this, even though she truly had no idea until it happened, and literally watched her father die in front of her eyes. But, you know, of course, she doesn't want her mother to know, which is why she's, you know, putting on a smile, even though she's having a meltdown on the inside. Which, I mean, oh, guys, it's honestly just such a screwed up situation with Victoria. Anyways, though, we're going to go ahead here and see how Destiny is doing. So let's switch control to Destiny Livingston. Alright, so we are back with Little Miss Destiny locked up in her room and she is honestly a guy, she's she's literally just enjoying herself. She's she's enjoying her day, she's enjoying you know, she's she's thinking about prom and honestly it's just right now for Destiny, things are going well in Destiny's life. Like, everything is going super well for Destiny, everything is working out for Destiny, and she just, ugh, honestly, it breaks my heart because she has no idea what's about to happen. She has no idea the betrayal of her mother. She has no idea that her mother is planning on literally screwing her. 
So, it's just, it's such a bad situation that, you know, that Victoria has put Destiny into. And honestly, there, guys, I don't know what she's going to do. I really don't. But, there is something, though. There is somebody, though, in her life that she can really rely on. Someone that she, you know, someone that actually lives in this very home that she can almost consistently rely on. Because, I mean, she's known. She's found out. And, I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, she, they're even good friends. It's her sister, Anastasia. So, Annie, being a good big sister, you know, she's kind of figured out a way around getting the around getting these doors. So she's been kind of sneaking in to the house. She's just, she's been kind of been sneaking into Destiny's little suite here, and has been having kind of like these like late night talkings with Destiny. These late night inspirational speeches with Destiny and. This has been going on for a while, and this has been, and I mean, nobody knows about this whole, you know, nobody knows about the secret, not even Victoria. So Destiny's, so Anastasia's going to come down here, and she's actually going to be a good big sis, a good big half-sister, and is going to help Destiny out with her homework. So, I mean, you know... Anastasia is, you know, Anastasia has known this entire time because she's witnessed. She witnessed Destiny's conception. She saw what hap, you know, she saw it happen. So she's def, so so she's definitely trying to play the good big sister card and is supporting Destiny and is helping Destiny and is making sure that Destiny is a good cookie in school. And she's been doing this for a while now behind her mother's back. Like, I mean, her mother still has no idea that's going on. But. Yeah, so I mean, that's definitely how Anastasia's been in Destiny's life. Which, I mean. She's going to go ahead, though, and she's going to hug her. And she's going to ask to see her beautiful prom dress. So we're going to go ahead here. We're going to be friendly. And we're going to... Um... We're just going to ask about her outfit. I kind of want to ask to see one of her outfits. Oh, there we go. Ask the outfits. We're going to go ahead and we're going to see her formal outfit. I'm not sure which one she'll, she, she'll change into. I'm not sure which one yet, but we're gonna go ahead and see. But of course, but of course, you know, Destiny is just letting everything go with her. Nope. Not the one I wanted. She changed into her, her normal formal dress. But, yeah, she's like, you know, it's like, I, you know, it's like, I think that there's something wrong. There's something horrifically wrong in today there, you know, today, today there at stage. I mean, like, like, my, like, mom didn't come downstairs and, you know, say hi or anything today. And Anastasia's like, I know, she got this weird phone call. And, you know, and of course, Destiny is over here and she's like, well, do you, do you know, do you know what I can do to get out of here? Because Destiny is just, she's done. She just, she wants to run away and never look back. But she doesn't know what else to do. I guess play her violin, but you know, that's okay. And Anastasia is gonna go ahead and watch her and listen to her and kind of give her an opinion. She's like, well, hey, you're getting pretty good at that. You're getting, you know, you're, you're gonna be a pretty good violinist. Maybe. Maybe, just maybe, you can, oh, I don't know, work up tips and buy yourself out of here. And she's, you know, and Destiny's over here, and she's kind of like thinking, like, this is the greatest idea that's ever came to be. And she's, oh my goodness, she's getting really good at that violin. She is getting really good at that violin.
Oh my goodness, she is really good at that violin nowadays. Oh, she has our note there. Is she still... Yeah, no, she still has to going on up, so she's going to build some good skills from that, which is pretty awesome. But, you know, this is definitely Anastasia's plan, where she's like, hey, you know what, I got an idea. Just pack up and leave, you know. <laughs> you know, play your violin, get some tips, and, you know, maybe even take some of that money that's meant for you. And get the hell out of here. Which Destiny just finds this to be like, like, once again, a revolutionary idea. So she's just going to go ahead here, she's going to hug her sister, and just like really kind of thank her for being around for so long and dealing with that, and you know, and kind of willing to deal with, with her antics. <laughs> it's so cute. So cute. Like, oh my goodness. I'm honestly, I think these two ladies are really kind of meant to be the double trouble. These two ladies are really meant to be double trouble, and I think that they fit that. They f they fit that criteria very well. I personally think. I mean, like they became really good friends, and you know, and. Anastasia has kind of helped this growing hate for her mother, and Destiny's been feeling that way too for a very long time. So they're definitely really close in that area, and they really agree in that sector as well. So, I'm actually going to end the episode off here. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I know there's been some really messed up stuff that's been going on, but, you know, I'm going to tell you guys that it's going to be really good. Like, it's going to be absolutely amaze balls so if you guys like this part don't forget to give a thumbs up as well as a comment for what you think and what you think is going to happen as well as a subs as well as hit that subscribe button if you have not yet and join our crafty squad thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you all next time <laughs> bye there guys